Hello and welcome back everybody to a new video. So here we will talk about the clozapine. Clozapine is another antipsychotic medication that is used for treatment of resistant cases of schizophrenia. And this medication is linked to a fatal adverse effects that we will talk about here. And we also going to talk about all the details of this medication. So let's start with an overview. So clozapine is the scientific name of the medication and famous trade names for it is the clozaril and the Laponex. So it is a typical antipsychotic medication. So antipsychotics are classified into typicals and atypicals. The typicals are the old antipsychotics, they also called the first generation of antipsychotics, while the atypicals are the new ones, they are so called new antipsychotics or called the second generation of antipsychotics. And clozapine is the first atypical antipsychotic to be discovered. And it is mainly used in treatment of resistant cases of the schizophrenia and the schizoaffective disorder as we mentioned. And the clozapine was synthesized in 1958 by the Swiss pharmaceutical company Wonder AG. Now let's talk about the pharmacokinetics of this medication. So it is available as oral formula only and it is well absorbed with bioavailability of 60% due to the first bus metabolism. So once the drug is absorbed from the intestine, it will go into the portal vein where it go into the liver, where it has it is first bus effect and that when 40% of the drug will be gone. And 60% will reach the systemic circulation. So that is the bioavailability of this medication. It is metabolized extensively by the liver via the cytochrome P450 enzymes, especially the CYB1A2, and excreted through urine and feces. And the elimination half-life of the clozapine is 14 hours. Now let's talk about the mechanism of action of the clozapine. So it antagonizes the serotonin 5-HT receptors and the dopamine receptors. So serotonin antagonism makes the clozapine good in managing the negative symptoms of schizophrenia, like social isolation, poverty of speech, lack of motivation, and inability to feel pleasure in the schizophrenic patients. So inhibition of serotonin by this medication lead to the relief of the negative symptoms. Antagonism of serotonin by this medication also lead to the relief of some of the extrapyramidal side effects that occur as a result of the dopamine antagonism that we will talk about a little bit later. So now serotonin helps relieve the negative symptoms of schizophrenia and it also helped to relieve some of the extrapyramidal side effects resulted from the dopamine antagonism. But the serotonin antagonism lead to weight gain and metabolic changes as adverse effects with the use of this medication. So we mentioned that clozapine antagonizes serotonin and dopamine and we talked about on how it antagonizes serotonin now let's talk about on how it antagonizes dopamine. So it antagonizes dopamine, but it has higher affinity to dopamine D4 receptors more than D2 receptors, which lead to less extrapyramidal symptoms compared to other antipsychotics. Because most of the other antipsychotics lead to dopamine D2 receptors more than the other subtypes while this medication specifically will lead to D4 receptors antagonism more than D2. And that will lead 
to less extrapyramidal symptoms compared to other antipsychotics. Now, dopamine antagonism in the mesolimbic and the mesocortical pathways which lead to the relieving of the positive symptoms of schizophrenia, like hallucinations and delusions. So those positive symptoms are relieved when the dopamine is antagonized in the mesolimbic pathway which connects the ventral tegmental area here with the nucleus accumbens. So that's the mesolimbic pathway and also the mesocortical pathway which connects the same ventral tegmental area with the frontal lobe of the brain. So antagonism of both of those pathways lead to the relief of the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. Now it also blocks dopamine in the tubero infundibular pathway but it has lower risk of hyperprolactinemia compared with other antipsychotics. So this pathway, the tubero infundibular pathway, connects the hypothalamus with the pituitary and it is responsible for balancing the prolactin and this medication, the clozapine, inhibit this pathway but only a little bit that it doesn't lead to hyperprolactinemia as much as other antipsychotics do and this medication also has antihistamine activity which lead the patient to become drowsy when they take this medication. Now this medication also blocks muscarinic receptors including M1, M2, M3 and M5 but it is agonist at the M4 muscarinic receptor. Now antagonizing these muscarinic receptors lead to the patient having anticholinergic symptoms like higher temperature, urinary retention, constipation, and sedation. But it acts as agonist as the M4 muscarinic receptor which is highly expressed in the salivary glands. So when the clozapine activates the M4 in the salivary glands, this would lead to hypersalivation as an adverse effect that comes with this medication. It also blocks the alpha adrenergic receptors to some degree too and those receptors are related to the blood pressure so when there is a blocking to these receptors this would lead to hypotension and this may also lead to light headedness. So now as a summary, clozapine inhibits serotonin, dopamine, muscarinic receptors, alpha adrenergic receptors and histamine receptors. Now let's talk about the therapeutic uses of the clozapine. So the use of clozapine in treatment of schizophrenia has shown better symptom control and reduced risk of hospitalization and reduced risk of drug discontinuation among schizophrenia patients in comparison with other antipsychotics. But it is not used as the first line because it may lead to a granulocytosis and GIT hypermotility which may be fatal to the patient. So this medication have some fatal adverse effects that prevent it from being the first line for treatment of schizophrenia although this medication is very good in symptom control and reduced risk of hospitalization and reduced risk of drug discontinuation. And those adverse effects will be discussed a little bit later in this video. So it is used in treatment of schizophrenia and schizoaffective disorder in patients who didn't have adequate response to two other antipsychotics medications. Those are called resistant cases. So it is used in resistant cases which are patients that didn't have a good response for two antipsychotics. And it's also used in patients who are unable to tolerate other antipsychotics due to extrapyramidal side effects. And it is used 
in patients who develop tardive dyskinesia while on some other antipsychotic medication. Because this medication has proven to be the best antipsychotic to not cause extra pyramidal symptoms. So that is why when the patient develops tardive dyskinesia, which is an extra pyramidal symptom, it is better to substitute their medication into clozapine. Now it is also used in treatment of psychosis that occur as a side effect to Parkinson's disease treatment and it is used for reducing risk of suicide in people with schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder who have high suicide risk. So if the patient have high suicide risk, the better antipsychotic treatment for them is a clozapine. Now it is also used for treatment of manic phase of bipolar disorder and it is the third line because the lithium being the first line and some other atypical antipsychotics are the second line. Now let's talk about the dosage of this medication. So according to the FDA, the max dose of the clozapine is 900 milligrams per day and the average dose is 300 milligrams per day for women and 400 milligrams per day for men. Now let's move on to talk about the adverse effects of this medication. So clozapine is used as a second line for treatment of schizophrenia because it may lead to a granulocytosis. A granulocytosis is likely to be fatal to the patient in the first year and a half of the treatment. And after that, the risk reduces for the agranulocytosis. And it is also used as a second line because it also leads to GIT hypomotility. So surprisingly, most common cause of death from this medication, more than agranulocytosis, is the GIT hypomotility, the gastrointestinal hypomotility. So because of these two adverse effects, this medication is used as a second line. So let's talk more about the agranulocytosis. So clozapine leads to bone marrow suppression and agranulocytosis in 1% of the cases, which is severe neutropenia, which is less than 500 cells per milliliters. And the risk factors for the agranulocytosis are old age patients, meaning elderly patients, and female gender, and concurrent treatment with the medications that cause the same condition. And when you treat a patient with a clozapine, you have monitored the CBC, the complete blood count for agranulocytosis. It also leads to GIT hypomotility, as we mentioned, which may lead to severe constipation fecal impaction, paralytic ileus, bowel obstruction, acute megacolon, and ischemia or necrosis of the bowel. It may also lead to myocarditis, which is 3% of the cases, and it's an inflammation of the heart muscle, and it also can be fatal. And the risk factors for the myocarditis include rapid titration of the medication, concurrent use of selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors and illicit substance abuse by the patient. And the most common adverse effect of the clozapine is hypersalivation in 60% of the patients who take this medication. So we mentioned that the clozapine is an agonist at the M4 receptors which are highly expressed in the salivary glands and this medication works as an agonist at these receptors, so it leads to hypersalivation. It also leads to metabolic syndrome in form of weight gain, high blood sugar levels due to the serotonin antagonism done by this medication. It also blocks the alpha adrenergic receptors to some degree, leading to postural hypotension and palpitation as we mentioned and it increases the risk of death if used in patients with dementia related psychosis because 
it increases the risk of stroke in these patients. So the extrapyramidal symptoms are not common with this medication because of its anticholinergic effects and it is serotonin antagonism and it is higher affinity for dopamine D4 receptors more than the D2 receptors. All of those factors make this medication produce less extrapyramidal symptoms than with other antipsychotics. And this medication lead to increase in the risk of seizures in seizure disorder patients. And this medication lead to anticholinergic side effects because it inhibits the muscarinic receptors, the M1, the M2, M3, and M5, which lead to elevated temperature, sedation, constipation, and urinary retention. And it also lead to periorbital edema, which is a rare adverse effect of this medication. Now let's talk about the clozapine withdrawal. So abrupt withdrawal of clozapine lead to cholinergic rebound effects. So because this medication have an anticholinergic effect because it block the muscarinic receptors, these receptors will try to upregulate, meaning there will be more muscarinic receptors in the body when there is a blocking to these receptors. And when we stop the medication suddenly, these receptors will be not occupied by the medication and this would lead to cholinergic rebound effects in form of indigestion, diarrhea, nausea and vomiting, hypersalivation, sweating, insomnia, and agitation. Now let's talk about the drug interactions of the clozapine. So fluvoxamine, which is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, theophylline, which is a bronchodilator, ciprofloxacin, which is an antibiotic, all of these inhibit the metabolism of the medication, leading to increased blood levels and overdose. And carbamazepine, which is an anti-epileptic medication, increased metabolism of this medication, leading to low plasma levels and treatment failure, and it is also increased the risk of agranulocytosis. Finally, let's talk about the clozapine overdose. So when the patient gets overdose on this medication, there would be symptoms like sedation, confusion, tachycardia, seizures, and ataxia. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe. And if you want to support more, you can by subscribing to the Patreon link provided in the description of this video. Thank you guys for watching and peace.